So getting clients, uh, you know, I had no clue what I was doing. So I literally just decided to, uh, you know, coming from the, that door to door, uh, you know, business, I decided to just buy Red Bull and get a phone and just call people out of the phone book. I did Google searches. I picked up, you know, phone books and just literally call. I would call like 400 people, you know, business owners some days and just, you know, get hung up on a lot. They, you know, half the time they were like, you know, don't call me ever again. So, uh, you know, I just would make phone calls, and after every couple hundred phone calls I'd make, someone would say, oh, hey, yeah, I might be interested in that. Why don't you come by my office tomorrow or, you know, whatever. And then uh, after, you know, a few months of that, maybe six months of just literally making phone calls and meeting people, I had, you know, a nice client base established, and we were able to, uh, you know, drop back and focus on operations. Uh, so perseverance, I talked about that earlier. That was the key thing that I learned from uh, my, you know, my first position uh, with that, uh, that, that Verizon company. Uh, you know, perseverance is, is definitely one of the key traits that it takes to be a successful entrepreneur because uh, you're gonna be, you know, just grinding it out every day. And, you know, there can be weeks or months that go by where you don't really see results. And even worse, sometimes you can get, you know, negative results. And it feels like you're, everything you're doing is wrong, and it can be, you know, like the worst, uh, you know, demotivationalizing, uh, you know, uh, roller coaster of emotions. It can be like the worst feeling some days, or some weeks, or some months. Uh, and it takes a lot of perseverance to be able to keep your eye on the prize, keep your eye on your one-year goal, your two-year goal, and the steps that you define to get there. Uh, you know, it's really uh, it can, you know, it can it can take a lot. So perseverance is is definitely the one of the important, uh, you know, things that it takes to, to be successful. Uh, so, you know, when I first started my company, uh, you know, for the first year, maybe year and a half, I was wearing all the hats. But, you know, not literally. I have a little bit better fa fashion sense than that. Uh, but, you know, I would close deals. I would consult with the clients. I would do design work. I would write code. I would do QA. I would support the customer, manage the infrastructure. So I was literally doing every single job. Uh, you know, we're a technology service company, so it was, you know, a lot of sales, customer support, uh, you know, implementation, strategizing. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, I got my hands involved in everything. I learned all the aspects of the business. It was very, you know, fly by the seat of my pants back then. Uh, but eventually, uh, you know, I realized I was making a big mistake. So, uh, one thing that I did over and over again was, would be that, uh, you know, I started hiring in the second year, uh, but, you know, I did hire too late all the time, consistently for a long time. I would wait until there was like, you know, half or a year's salary for the person I wanted to hire in a reserve account, plus, you know, more than enough money monthly coming in to afford their salary. And I would always play it safe, but that was a huge mistake because it not only made us miss critical deadlines multiple times, but it stunted growth of the organization. Uh, what would have been smarter would be just to go out and get a line of credit and make the risk, you know, take the risk. It's all about taking risks. So uh, that would have been the smarter thing to do, and, and now I've learned from that mistake. But, uh, you know, a really, um, really successful friend of mine comes from a background with uh, Anderson Accounting and Accenture, uh, executive at Accenture. Uh, now he has his own consulting firm with about 60 employees. Uh, the advice he gave me, which is like advice that I live by now, is that you should always have people hired, trained, and on the bench ready for ready for a contract. Now, this is in the services business, so you know every single uh, business is different. Uh, so this necessarily might not apply if you guys are you know manufacturing something or uh, you know building like a software product. This particular uh, piece of advice may or may not apply, but it, especially in any kind of consulting or service-oriented business where you know essentially you're trading time for money. Uh, you should always have people trained and ready to go so that when you land a contract, you can just, you know, jump on it. You don't have to, you know, backtrack, go try to hire, recruit, and train, and then onboard them. And then by the time you have them onboarded and up to speed, you're already two, three months into the contract, and then you're taking a gamble on somebody after you've already closed the deal. And, you know, there's a lot riding on that. It can be risky and cause a lot of problems. The, the, the financial risk of having someone on the bench is less than the risk of waiting to hire. Uh, so glass ceilings. There's going to be uh, a lot of glass ceilings you'll hit throughout the growth of your business. So, uh, you know, the first one, I just kind of picked round numbers. Uh, you know, every business experiences different growth cycles, but, uh, you know, 
get for what the things you do to get from zero to hundred thousand dollars are going to be much different than the things you do to get from hundred thousand dollars to two hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue. And then you know likewise from two fifty to a million, then a million to five million, uh, and then so on and so forth. Every time you step up, you know your your first your first bit your first growth cycle is all about you doing everything you can, wearing all the hats, uh, you know flying by the seat of your pants. In the early days, you need to fly by the seat of your pants. Then in the second growth cycle, you maybe need want to hire one or two people, and you want to start to sort of build some processes and some procedures, but not necessarily have them like carved in stone at that point. And then by the time you're hitting around one million, you probably want to start really having solid procedures and processes and starting to automate as much as you can and start to delegate as much as you can. And as an owner, you don't really want to be doing anything that's critical to the business. You should try to outsource all of your jobs to your, all of your personal responsibilities to your employees. Uh, you know, and then it just keeps going from there. It's, uh, it's constantly reevaluating what you're doing and how it's going to either hold you back or help you get to the next level. Uh, there's, you know, always changes in, in each growth cycle that you need to identify and be able to uh, uh, understand when, when you see the, the flags for them. Um, 